Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. How often do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by life or your mind has just become so busy that actually it's suddenly starting to not be as efficient as what it was a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago? Do you find yourself getting a little bit blank minded? Do you find your thoughts straying off to a place where actually it's making it harder for you to be able to function throughout your day? Do you know what? I've been going through some problems with my health, but this has been making things far, far worse and exacerbating my physical health and my mental well-being to the point where I've really had to slow down, calm down in life, try to switch my mind off just because of how overly busy. It's literally like a traffic, a traffic jam at about five o'clock in a busy area wherever you are in the world. And it's just been like that with my mind so, so much lately where it's got to the point where it's really started to make things quite unbearable and to the point where it's been exacerbating uh, health issues and just take all that aside, it's just been exhausting. This has been going on for a couple of months and I've been thinking to myself, do you know what, I need to change because number one, how stressed I am, how overwhelmed I am and how exhausted my mind feels, even from a good night's sleep, really is starting to take a toll on me. My job is quite stressful, so sort of straight away, um, that was a little bit of an issue straight off. I'm naturally a stressful person and I worry about everything in my life. Not necessarily about me, it doesn't have to be about me at all. I have, uh, I have three brothers, I have incredible parents. Um, my nan is my absolute world, she is no longer with me, she is with the Lord up above, but I have nieces and nephews and I just have worries galore. Now you may think why when you look at your actual own life. I'm not married, I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have children, but I do have a very hectic life, I do have a very stressful life. Now that's not going to change. I am not going to change being a natural worrier because that is me, that's what makes me the person I am. And I don't think my family or I would actually want me to change that at all. My life, there's nothing in my life I need to change. What's neat what's been needing to change for quite a long time actually is up here in how I function in terms of worry and stress and in terms of how I manage a busy mind and it really did take the last couple of months and I say couple of months we're in June now six months my life to be quite honest with you at times there's this mirror facade where everything has been fine and running well and I'm all okay and yeah well, for six months, I've been managing the problem for about a year, maybe 18 months before that, but the last six months, it's it's really, really ramped up. And it's now time to talk about what's happening. So I've been having uh, some sort of seizure. They're still not 100% aware of what it actually has been. Um, and here in this part of the world, uh, I am waiting to see some uh, some top specialists in hopefully to get me back on the right road of uh, a perfect uh, health bill. Um, so, but to be quite honest with you, a lot of what I have been trying to do is already really, really starting to improve things. Now, when I say that, I mean by completely trying to change my life. And I don't mean my diet. I don't necessarily mean sort of anything physical changes. I mean up here. Now, when I say that, I haven't, I haven't got any any sort of uh, diagnosed issue or anything like that at the moment. There was speculation about the, uh, that possibly it could be epilepsy. It might not be. It could be what I was going through. I've had quite a lot of operations. Uh, it could be uh, my job. I have recently, I say recently, within the last year, been promoted and taken on a lot more at work. I'm performing really, really well at work. Um, but there are signs in my life, for example, my mind has just been almost like that it's been cutting out. Sometimes I go to say something, I won't get the right words, I'll get a little bit mixed up. I found that my memory can be a little bit delayed at times. Um, and then throughout all of this, now in the last month to two months, things have really, really improved. But if we go back a couple of months, every couple of days I was having these seizures, I had some really quite nasty falls. Um, and one of which being I was doing something in the kitchen and all of a sudden I live in the family home. So all of a sudden, I think I was drying up some glasses, I can't quite remember, and I'd put those away, I turned around. And then I remember waking up 
uh, on the floor having these seizure type events which would absolutely floor me for a good 24 maybe two days uh, so 24 hours to up to two days and my mind my speech would be very very mixed up um, I would find it very very hard to gauge what had happened to me I felt extremely disorientated and almost just like that my whole body went no no, absolutely not. Um, and it would take me that I would have, and I'm never a person to lie down, even if I'm feeling tired, I kind of keep pushing through. I am never one to sort of relax and do things, just kind of almost, it sounds awful, doesn't it, for the sake of it. I, I like there to be a purpose. I've got so much I'm studying, I'm doing so many different qualifications in the background, my job, and I'm, I like to look after people, and I like to make sure my niece and my nephew are okay, and... Um, my brothers, if they need me, I'm there. My mum and my dad, I like to make sure that I'm in their lives and I'm there and we've got such a strong bond. And then amongst all of that, I've got that heartbreak of my nan. I'm wanting to be with her all the time, but yet she is in heaven with the Lord up above. All of this going on and then just seemingly more and more and more on that balance of life. And then strangely, every couple of days, I would have these nasty seizure events. And I've had a lot of accidents from them to the point where maybe getting up to 10 weeks nearly three months ago now um it was suspected that i fractured my hip from falling in the kitchen and i was in a lot of pain i pushed through all of this i managed this back and forth the doctors uh there was some problems with my x-ray at the hospital and there was a delay in me receiving that um but thankfully they didn't think that i needed any surgery i was just managing the pain so i've been doing uh sort of physio exercises and one thing or another and manage it with pain relief and thankfully thank the lord above and touch wood i'm um a lot better now but however, what I have almost uh, been trying to do is almost separate my mind. Now, you may think straight away, what on earth is Bradley going on about? There screams something medical here. Yeah, I thought that too. Okay, but there was, and I've been in, sat in A&E, accident and emergency, um, so many times from falls and seizures. And first of all, arriving there with my brother or my father or my mum or, or whoever and thinking, do you know what? And first of all, when I'm there, it's so dazed and clouded, I can't get my mind um, and my words, and I don't really remember a lot about it. Um, but it really took me when I, how long you wait in accident and emergency. I mean, our NHS in this, in this country do an absolutely incredible job, but they are pushed to the brink. They really, really are. Um, but they look after me fantastically well every time I'm in there. And I've, in this year, I've probably been in there four or five times. Um, and do you know what? It really took the last time I was there and I was with my twin brother and I thought, do you know what? This is getting ridiculous. I want to travel. I want to go on holidays. I want to meet, um, I, I, I want to, uh, meet so many goals and aspirations in my life. I want to have, uh, and meet the, a, a girlfriend. I'd love to have a life partner. I'd love to have a wife and children and, uh, and a beautiful home of my own and all of these things. I want to still move my career forward. Of course, I want to, um, and how could you put it without coming across snobby and all of that horribleness? Um, I want to earn a living. I want to earn more so I can have the lovely house. Do you know what I mean? The nice things, the luxuries and have a beautiful wife and have beautiful children and all of that. And grandchildren in the end. I, I want all of that. Do you know what I mean? Who doesn't in this life? And I, and I want that. And I'm sat there thinking, do you know, at the moment, I'm not even able to leave the house. Why? Yes, there's medical reasons still going on in the background. I've got, unfortunately, um, quite a, an extensive list of all different things which I manage on a daily basis, but nothing neurological which is giving me these issues. I mean, I've collapsed in the bathroom. This is how embarrassing it had got. I had collapsed in the bathroom getting out of the shower. Yes, absolutely. You don't wear clothes in the bathroom. Collapsed in the bathroom. I bashed my arm horrifically, done my knee horrifically. I've had, uh, in 2020, 21, I had my groin reconstructed from hernia operations, which went wrong. I dislodged my groin. I was in a lot of pain when I come around. And there I am, that one of my family members had thrown a towel over me and found me on the floor. And I'd woke up, and I still don't remember a lot about it. This is what my family have told me. All of these things, so why on earth is this happening? I'm awaiting cardio, uh, cardiology appointments for my heart and everything, and a heart monitor and all of that. But do you know what? I really did think, right, Bradley, every single day you wake up, as soon as you wake up in the morning, uh, around between 5, 5.30, you worry, you stress about the day ahead. You worry, you stress. If mum and dad are okay, if 
you're worrying and stressing about historical things, but by now you're worrying and stressing about your own life. You're worrying and stressing about the pressures. I haven't achieved this yet. I'm not married yet. I've not met a girlfriend yet. I've not started a family yet. I've not done this. I've not done that. My mind is constantly at work and work in finance. That that forecast schedule is coming up. That meeting's coming up. This is happening. That's happening. And do you know what? There's an element of being conscientious, but there's an element where you're starting to obsess. And I am naturally an obsessive person. I worry about everything. Everything's got to be pristine and perfect. So therefore I'm worrying, what does such and such think of me? Have I done that right? Could I have done more? Then I go back and I do more. And this is how busy things have got. And you know what? I'm there trying to help, for example, a brother who has, um, my twin brother, who, my brother's my world. Um, I've got one who I help in who mental health issues. We've had quite a history there. Um, it's really, really difficult, um, but I'm there always supporting. I've got another brother who um, it, at this time has been going through problems with different things in his life. Um, my mum and my dad take on all of this and my absolute world, so I try and support them. And it's just, I try and be almost like the putty between everybody. And there, my parents are seeing me almost falling apart, let's put it this way, but up here. And then I'm starting to have conversations, I'm starting to think, do you know what, I don't remember that happening. Um, I'm struggling with my words. It's getting better. But what I've started to do, and literally I started looking online and doing some research, thinking, do you know what, I've got to change, I've got to get a grasp of this. And do you know, it's amazing how much I've been obsessing and how much I've been stressing over things, which to be quite honest with you, I've only got to look in my own life. And I looked after my nan, who is my absolute world, um, who had a very long battle with Alzheimer's disease. And my mum and I were there always. And she's my, my, my mum is my world, my dad is my world, and my nan is my world. In my heart, in my head, I've got three parents at my parent table. So my nan not being with me, it's hard. And do you know what? The way I've seen her go out of this world, um, very horrifically, um, she had a very long life, but very horrifically, I always said to myself, when I seen that, that and I, when I was with her, that actually, do you know what, anything in this world, what we worry about, it just does not matter, because to the most incredible, beautiful lady ever, all the stressing in the world, and all the wonderful things, all the incredible things my nanny done, this, this happened. So it's like the way... I'm looking at it then, I was looking at it then, it was like, probably you're not going to stress, you're not going to do it anymore. It's just not worth it. There are so many more precious, incredible things in this world to concentrate and to put all that energy into. Do you know, I know it, but yet I wasn't doing it. So having said that, all of this is going on in my life and it manifests. And the last six months, it really had manifested to a huge issue. And maybe there's something psychological, um, not psychological, neurological, something with my heart. I'm not sure yet. We're still dealing with that. But something was happening and I was making it 10 times worse by all of this stress and all of this going on. So now what I really do try to do, and I came across, um, I came across uh, a few different sort of self-help sort of guides and clips and things. I remember we some incredible books and one thing or another of cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and I've been really trying to help my uh, help myself with things. And I found some incredible clips on uh, YouTube. And I've been really trying to concentrate on separating the worries and the stress. And you know what? Right. When I get these thoughts now about you must do that, you must do this. Bradley, you haven't done that yet. You haven't done this. Sometimes now I can really start to realize that it's not necessarily me. Here is me in the middle, and I know where I want my life to go, and I've got this plan and everything, what I've done. But yet, aside it, both sides squashing inwards is these obsessions and this almost OCD trait, and this almost like this, this striving, this aspiration of perfection, which is suffocating me and causing me all this exacerbation to my health, my well-being, my, my mental health, my physical health. And it's almost like that I can barely breathe. So now when these thoughts and this comes on, it's almost like straight away what I tell myself is, say for example, I get a thought, have you done this? You need to do that. Have you done it better? Could you have said that? Is and maybe, maybe not. And I literally started as basic as that uh, through different clips and things online, which I've watched in different books and just lots of research and things. And um, I'm going to see if the clip, one of the clips which I really loved and what I can help, if I can recommend them on the end of this clip, I will do. Please do not quote me on that. But he is incredible. I can't remember his name, but he is incredible. Um, 
And I think he's had these problems as well. And I found it on YouTube and it's just absolutely helping me tenfold. So now when I have these thoughts, I really try and smile, as he says, and invite them in and almost like this doubt in this sort of how it's making me feel with different thoughts and things and stresses and worries and all of this. I'm now sort of trying to say, do you know what? And, and, okay, I may be the worst person ever if I don't double check this 50 times or 26 times, or if I don't say this to somebody, if I don't apologize, or if I don't achieve this by a certain time. Okay, and, and I keep doing this to myself now. And I'm literally saying, when I get these thoughts, I get these sort of almost obsessions to, to, to worry and must make sure somebody's okay or something is going on in work and life and this kind of squashing effect everything outside and yet me with my life I know where I'm going I know what I'm doing I know I, what I want in everything in life and then all of this outside it's suffocating so now I'm like and okay Bradley you might not have got that perfect and maybe you haven't got this maybe not and I'm literally doing that. And I'm not giving these thoughts, these obsessions, these worries, these fears value. And do you know what? I've been giving it so much value for so long that it's been suffocating me and it's been causing me so much detriment. It has literally been pushing me to the brink of the edge. And with all these health issues, and bear in mind when I'm giving all those things value, Every now and again, these seizures, these whatever events they're called, I was just having so many issues. And then to the point where I was having falls in, I mean, my hip, for example, the pain I went through with that and just all of what's been going on. And now I'm literally not giving it value. And do you know the amount of times I said it in my head? And, and now maybe, maybe not. And I'm greeting these things with a smile. And it's almost just like for months and months and months, and probably I don't know how long, it's been squashing me into this one. So here I am in the middle, all of this outside, these thoughts, these obsessions, whatever they are, fears, worries. I've been classing all of this as one. But when actually I'm here, all of that, I need to shove off, concentrate on me in the middle, because I know where I'm going, I know what I want. And do you know what? I'm starting to be able to breathe. And I've been doing this probably for about four, six weeks, and it's getting better all the time of not giving it value. So my friends, when it all gets too much, have a look at what you're doing to yourself up here, okay? And breathe. And do not give it value. And as I say, if I can find those clips and if I can attach them on here, I absolutely will do. Because they have really, really just altered and changed my thought process and my life. Um, and I'm not having these seizure type events nowhere near. I'm still having moments. I'm still having problems and heart palpitations and things like that. Um, but I'm just being steady, I'm just being sort of calm, so I've still got these appointments, the cardiologist for my heart, and I'm due to see the ne neurologist as well, um, and the doctor at some point too, um, but there is no, no absolute uh, shadow of a doubt that all of what's been going on has been really, really making it ten times worse. Um, so yeah, don't give that value, and if you're getting to a point where, oh my goodness, it's just all getting too much in life, what on earth can I do? Just stop, slow down, and I would have never ever looked. I don't know quite what. That visit sat in A&E thinking, I want so much to happen in my life. I want to travel. I I want uh, I want to I meet the wife of my dreams, the lady of my dreams. I want to have a beautiful, let's, let's not beat around the bush. I want that beautiful romance. I want that love. I want that click, that, that what makes your heart skip, what makes you feel all fuzzy inside. I want children. I want a family. I want to grow old and have grandchildren and all those things. And at the moment, I would have only have had to have fell with a seizure, banged my head. And you know what? I, I dread to think what would have happened and what I would have left behind with my, my parents, my family and everything. It's crazy. It really, really is. So now I'm really concentrating on not giving any of that value. And remember, for so long, I've been walking around with all of this, all of what we talked about. Here's me. All of what we talked about. OK. There's one. But it's not. All of that. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't have been giving that value. Here I am, me, in the middle. All of that rubbish, most of that's probably not going to happen. Do you know what I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, oh my God, you shouldn't be saying that. But actually, I'm not giving it value. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. But right now, I'm okay. I'm not giving it value. So on that note, if it's all too much, start by taking a look up here. God bless you. Thanks very much for sharing that. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you then. Bye now.